Hello, calculus students. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. Today's lesson is going to focus in on one-sided limits. Last lesson, we did two-sided limits, and we learned what a limit is. But this time, it's going to be, be a little trickier because we're going to look at just what a one side of the limit do. So a one-sided limit is still the y value a function approaches as you approach a given x value. So we're going to have an x approach a certain number, the y value is approaching something else. But this time, we're going to focus in either from the left or from the right side. So as opposed to both sides together, we're looking at just the left or just the right. So let me show you what I mean by that. This first example down here, we have the limit of f as x approaches 3 from the left side is negative 3. So you see this graph? We're going to approach the number 3 here. So as we approach an x value of 3, we approach it from the left of 3. So we're going this direction, approaching 3. So if you stay on the graph and approach 3, the left side of the limit is down here, a y value of negative 1, as you look at the y value. So that's what this is. The way we write it with limit notation is we say the limit as x approaches 3 from the minus side, from the negative side. That just means from the left side. That's what the little minus in the exponent is. So we approach 3 from the left, and then that equals negative 1. So this is an x value approaching from the left side means the y value is negative 1. So if we do the other one, the limit of uh, from the right side, we're going to approach 3 from the right side. So you look here, we approach 3 from just the right side, and the y value here is a negative 2. And the notation for that is 3 from the positive side, so from the right side of 3, and that y value is 2. So again, the exponents, either a little minus or a little plus, tells you left side of that x value versus the right side of that x value. Now, if the two sides are different, that's where we get to this last one. If you have a left side approaching down here and a right side up here, and they don't come together at the same y value, that means the limit as x approaches 3 does not exist. So notice we don't have a little plus or a minus, so that means it is both sides of 3. And therefore, the limit does not exist because they do not come together at the same y value. Okay, so get that down if you don't have it all down now. And let's put this into practice. Here we have this crazy graph. And let's go through and answer all these. Now, if you think you can do this, go ahead and just pause it and, or fast forward it to the end. And you can do the answers on your, on your own and see if you get what I get. If you're a little bit confused on this, then follow along with me here. So we're going to approach negative 2 from the left side. So as we look at our graph, here's what that means. We're going to approach negative 2 from the left side. So now as we're coming from the left side, just follow along what the graph does. So that means we follow the graph up here from the left side of negative 2, and it's approaching a y value of 1. Here we're going to approach negative 2. So let's look at the graph. We approach negative 2, this time from the positive side of negative 2, or in other words, the right side. So we are approaching the right side of negative 2, coming back towards it. So now just do that again, but just follow it on the graph. And as we follow on the graph, it is approaching a y value of negative 2. Here, we're going to approach negative 2. And since we don't have a little plus or minus, that means we approach from both sides. And if we're approaching from both sides, they have to come together. And since they don't, 1 is up here. Uh, going to 1, and the right side is down here going towards negative 2, that means this limit, I should have had a little equal sign there, this limit does not exist. Okay, so that's just an abbreviation for does not exist or undefined, something like that. Now we do the limit as x approaches 1. So that does, it does not have a little plus or minus, so that means both sides. So we come over here to 1. We approach from both sides. Where is the graph headed? The graph is headed together at a y value. Let's see? y value of 1. Just because it's an open circle, if you remember from our last lesson, that doesn't matter. Yes, the function's down here, uh, which is, if you look here, that's letter h, f of 1. Where is f of 1? That's negative 2. Okay, so there's a difference between the limit where it's headed and where the actual graph is. All right, limit as x approaches 0. So the limit as x approaches 0 from both sides. That one's a little easier. There's just, where is the graph? They're both coming together right there at a y value of negative 2. That one's pretty simple. We're going to approach 3 from the left. So let's go over here to where x equals 3. We're approaching it from the left side. So let's go up here to the graph. And the graph is just approaching a y value of 5. That one's pretty straightforward. And then negative 1 from both sides. 
So here's negative one, we're coming in from both sides and we're approaching this y value down here of negative three. Uh, we already did this one, so then the last one, f of negative two, x equals negative two, where's the graph? Open circle down there, so it's a filled in circle up there, it equals one. So that's one of the types of problems you'll do in the practice. The other type is a little bit more challenging where you have to come up with a graph all on your own. Here we have one, two, three, four, five conditions. We have to create a graph that makes all five of these conditions work. So there could be lots of different answers because as long as these five things are met, all these conditions, then you've done it correctly. So let's just start off here with this. G of three equals negative one. Now remember, that's just when X is three, Y equals negative one. That just represents a coordinate point. So let's go three, negative one, put a little dot right there. Next up is a limit. We're going to have a limit approach as X approaches three, the limit is going to be four. So we have a Y value of four as we approach three from both sides. So we're going to have to have an open circle here and we're approaching this number. Now, I don't know if it's going like this. I don't know if it's going like this. I don't know if it's going like this. Like, I don't know for sure how it's coming together here. So this is where you use a pencil and I'm just going to kind of put little marks here just to remind myself that it's coming together there. But I don't really know what the both sides of that graph's doing. Okay, now let's go on. The limit as X approaches negative two from the right side. So here's my negative two. I'm coming back towards it. So on the right side of it, I'm coming back towards it. And it says that it has to be a Y value of one. So let's go right here and put in, is it open? Is it closed? It doesn't say, it, uh, it doesn't really tell me if it's open or closed. It just says the limit's approaching one. So uh, I'll just leave it open for now. It doesn't really matter. Um, what else have I got here? And I don't know if it's going down, like maybe it's going down and then back up like that. I don't really know yet. Uh, so I'll leave that off there for now. And then it says on my next line, G is increasing from negative two to three. So from the X values of negative two to the X value of three in this space right here, the graph should be going up. All right, so that tells me I have to be going up here. So let's just kind of maybe connect that a little bit. It's curving up. It doesn't really matter if it has sharp corners or whatever, it just has to go up. All right, this last one is where kids tend to have some problems. Uh, this is a little bit of some confusing notation. What this is saying is that the left side of negative two, the left side of negative two, has to be larger than the right side of negative two. So let's just say I have X equals negative two down here and it's coming together. The left side as I approach negative two has to be higher than the right side of negative two. So how do I put this together on my graph? Well, if I've got the, the right side is below it, well, I already kind of have this going right here. So let's just go up here and put the, the left side is somewhere up here. It doesn't really matter where I could put it anywhere. And then it's just going up, going off and it doesn't really matter what it's doing. Um, so let's put that, make sure that that works. So the left side is now higher than the right side. The left side of negative two is higher than the right side. Okay, so this looks like, uh, oh, no, no, we'll just kind of make an arrow go down here. I think I've got it all, but this is how you double check. Let's just go through these conditions and make sure we're good. X equals three, Y equals negative one. Right there, there's a dot, check, that worked. The limit as X approaches three, so we come together from both the left and the right side of three. We're coming together at a Y value of four, that worked. The limit as X approaches negative two from the right side, so where's negative two right here? The right side has to equal a Y value of one, and it does right there, so check. And G is increasing from negative two to three, so the graph's going up between negative two and three, and it is, it's going up that whole time, so that worked. And then the left side of negative two is higher than the right side of negative two. The left side is higher than the right side, and that worked. Okay, so sometimes you'll go through these types of problems, and as you work through this, you think you did it right, and as you work through each condition, then you'll discover something that's wrong. Uh, so you just wanna go through and see if you can fix that for it. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Rock that mastery check, and I will see you back in the next one.